are the days of Elijah. Good evening. It's good to be with you again tonight uh, by live stream, Facebook, and later on YouTube. For those of you that that uh, decide to join in with us, it's, it's a blessing to be with you. A couple of thoughts tonight for you. Uh, for myself, uh, I've listened to all the things about... Uh, the virus, the coronavirus, I've listened to everything everybody's been saying about it and the talk about it and are we going to open back up or we're not going to open back up in my line of work. I kind of uh, hear a lot about what's getting ready to happen or what's going to happen. I just did my eye there. You're not supposed to touch your face. But anyway, <clears throat> so there's a lot of, a lot of, wow, what's, what's going on? What's happening? What, what do we have in store for us? Well, let me tell you, as a child of God, you have something in store for you. He has a plan for each and every one of us. He uh, died on the cross that we might have eternal life and also everlasting life. And that's the great thing that he's given us. Now, you might be stuck at home. You might have, uh, things might be a change for you quite a bit like they have for us. Uh, 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 I've noticed a lot of people have been stuck at home are stuck at, uh, at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's because they're buying a lot of stuff, doing a lot of work in their yards and stuff. But there's a lot of questions about what's going on, what's happening. And my thoughts have been up and down on, on the virus and, and everything about it. And, and my heart has been for my church and, and missing having everybody here and missing seeing you here. I, I can't wait to have the opportunity to see all of you again together and all us together in our church and, and the kids running and the kids having a good time. and That's an exciting time. <clears throat> but I think about the Apostle Paul again tonight. And uh, as I think about it, what? What do, we, what do we hear? What do we hear from the doctors? What do we hear from... The president, what do we hear from our leaders? What are we hearing? What's going on? Well, the Apostle Paul was uh, at the end of his road. His life was uh, coming to an end, and he has a couple of things to say. I call it the pep rally chapter, and uh, it's found in Philippians. And it's Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasseth all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ. Now listen, what are we thinking about? What are we listening to? What do we hear? Here's what he said. Finally, brethren, Whatever things are pure, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So I'm going to say this to you tonight. If you meditate on these things, the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be with you and be with us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before... Uh, Brother Raph comes up and brings the message. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Lord, there's no doubt in my mind that you're in control of every situation. And Lord, we listen and we hear a lot of things, but there's only one voice we need to be listening to, and that's your voice. And that's coming from you. And we need to be heeding to your word and listening to your word. Lord, I pray tonight as, as my brother Ralph gets up and brings the message, I pray that if there's someone out there listening, Lord, a member of our church or not a member, whoever it is that's listening, Lord, if they've never accepted you as Lord and Savior, they don't have that peace, they don't have that comfort, they don't have that joy that they once had. Lord, I pray tonight, Lord, that they would give their heart to you. I pray tonight that they would be a born-again Christian, that they would get saved tonight. Lord, I pray if there's someone out there that's going through a trial, through a trouble, through a situation, and all of my brothers and sisters that are dealing with all these things that are going on with this virus, I pray, Lord, that you just come down and touch them. I pray that you come down and touch them, give them that peace and that comfort that only you can give. And, Lord, I pray that they think on your promises and think on your word and be obedient to you. 
and trust in you and give their heart to you. Thank you and praise you for what you're going to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. Amen. Amen, brother. Thank you. Wow, here we are again. Uh, I just want to look at a familiar story, actually. Uh, so to many of you, you might have heard it. If you've not, that's okay. We'll look today at 1 Samuel chapter 3. Uh, last week, we looked at the taking direction from God and, and the ways he could show you and talk to you and, and uh, give you the direction. Uh, this week, I want to look at a particular man who's, who has a boy, a child, will hear from God. And that's Samuel. Let's look and we'll just dig in. And uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse number 1, it says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious or rare in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at the time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was and Samuel was laid down to sleep. That the Lord called Samuel and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I. For thou callest me, and he said, I call not. Lie down again, and he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he arose and went to Eli and he said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called this child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down. And it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went to lay down in the place or in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as he had other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of every one that heareth it shall tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house, when I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever in the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged, that the sacrifice nor offering forever. And Samuel lay until the morning, and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, Here am I. And he said, What is this thing that the Lord has said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee, and more also, if thou hides anything from me, of all the things that he said unto thee. And Samuel told him every whit and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him. And he did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. A most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you. We praise your holy name, Lord. 
We lift you up in this place here tonight. Lord, as they're watching here uh, uh, on Facebook or YouTube or, or however they may hear these words, Lord God, as your word goes out, Father, you promise that it will not return void, Lord. And it's your word that we hear, Lord, that you be lifted up. Lord, if there's one that's lost and doesn't know you, God, I pray that, that they be drawn unto you, Lord, because if you are lifted up, all men shall be drawn unto you, Lord. Today is the day of salvation, Lord. In Jesus' sweet name, and we pray. Amen. Here is a very familiar story. We see Samuel. I think my thing's messed up, is it? Okay. We're good. Okay. We see Samuel is here and he hears God. He doesn't realize it's God, not till the fourth time, actually. And Eli told him. But the fourth time he listens and gets a word from God. Matter of fact, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them that, are, that follow me. He knows them. His sheep hear his voice. We are his sheep. He is our good shepherd. See, Jesus wants to lead you and I. He wants to lead his flock. And he wants to do so personally and intimately. See, he walks with me. And as the song goes, he walks with me and he talks with me. And do we hear his voice? Are we, are we listening to what the Lord has to say? See, the Lord wants to speak to you and I. He, uh, the Lord wants us to know what he's doing. That we, we can walk with him in fellowship. See, there's nothing more wonderful or more important than hearing the voice of the Lord. There's nothing at all. He is your shepherd and he's leading you. We are his sheep. See, there's nothing more important than talking to him passionately or personally or intimately because he knows the very thoughts you have. He knows your concerns. He knows your heart. And you dig in his word and you listen to what he has to say. See, I've heard, I've heard, I've been in church. See, here we are tonight. We're in a church in a different way. But, you know, we could still hear his voice. As the man of God reads God's word, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. As God's word goes out. I'm, one of my favorite verses, I guess I've, if you've been at this church and you've heard me, I, I've used this verse a lot. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And it says, If, if any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and I will sup with him. I'll have dinner with him. I'll have fellowship with him and he with me. That's Jesus. Now he's not talking to the lost. He's not talking to the, the, some Joe down the street. He's talking to his church. He's talking to you and I, the ones that believe, are believers. So he's talking there in, in, in Revelation chapter 3 to the church. And that's you and I. He knocks. And you know, it may be, it may be just some kind of interruption, we say, but he's he's knocking. He may come to us at night like he did Samuel. But you're we're not going to hear an audible voice. We're just going to, and our things are just going to start going through our mind, our head, and we're going to say, Lord, is that is that you? Does it match up to his word? See, he talks to you and I. And if any man hear my voice, he said, and open the door. I will come in unto him and sup with him. See, God is speaking. That's not a question. See, the issue is, are we tuning in as God's people? Last week I had a radio here and I held it up because right now there's radio waves going through this whole church and, and at your house there's radio waves. But, you know, we have to turn into the right frequency. And if we turn it, tune into the right frequency, then we can hear these these voices, whether it's country channel or or a Christian channel or whatever channel, you could tune in and listen to these voices. And sometimes we're tuned in to the wrong channels. So we're not hearing what God wants us to say, what God wants us to do, or, or what he's saying. See, the same thing is true about a radio. We've got to be tuned in to what God's saying. See, he is our shepherd, and see, he's speaking continually. He's, he's, he's speaking continually. The question is, are we tuned into his frequency? See, here's a young boy named Samuel who's hearing the word of the Lord. 
So I want to look at four, just a few things, four. We're going to look at four different things here in this book. Last week, hey, we looked at 10, okay? So this week it's four. Four things I really want to look at here about this story about Samuel. Uh, Samuel gets a word from the Lord because he's tuned in to God's frequency and he hears his voice. So we've got to see what he did. First off, who does God speak to here? Eli is the the priest who's been around and, you know, he's he's the old pro. But sometimes when we're the old pro, we have our blinders on because we already know this stuff. So we're not as sensitive to God sometimes. We can get like that very easily. Who does he talk to here? He talks to a child. He spoke to a child. Matter of fact, Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 3, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you be converted... And become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. What are you saying? See, sometimes we get too distinguished. Sometimes we become like Eli. You know, our senses are, are not as sharp as they used to be because we, we know it. We've been through it. Uh, we can become a little cynical sometimes. We don't have the same sense of wonder that we used to have with what God's doing. Because a lot of our life gets focused around order. I go to church on Sunday, no matter what. I'll sit there, no matter what. I'll go to church on Wednesday, no matter what. You know, we've got a routine, a ritual. And if sometimes when we get that routine, we just keep going at it. We keep going at it. It becomes a ritual. And when it becomes a ritual in our life, then it becomes a rut. Are we living in a rut? I think God's broke up our routine. He's broke up our ritual. I hope he's broken up our has broken up our rut because it, it's easy to get into that. We do, but here he comes to a child. See, here he comes to one who is has that childlike expectancy. He comes to to one. See, we we sometimes become the old pro. Maybe some of you nodded off and flipped, changed the changed the Facebook thing to watching TV or whatever here. But uh, see, because we're old pros, we've heard it all before. One of my favorite songs is one we could sing every day, every day. Nobody. And you know, I love that song. But so some people, we're getting tired of it. I've heard it. They, 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 we always sing that song. Nobody. But it speaks a message so powerful. It's not about the words. It, it's about what it says inside the song. See, here... We have to have that child expectancy. We have to have that sense of wonderment, that curiosity that only children have, that excitement that it goes. You know, used to, I got all excited to go to Silver Dollar City. You know, I bet when it opens up, some of us are going to be very excited to go to Dollywood again. So if you didn't know, that's what Silver Dollar City used to be. Uh, but or, or what Silver Dollar, it used to be Silver Dollar City. But here we are. See, if you're if you're like, Eli, and you, you've, you've heard it all before, then you're not going to hear from the Lord. May, if you get bored and change the channel, you're not going to hear from the Lord. You have to be tuned in to his frequency. Now let's look second. When does God speak? When does God speak? It says, And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord. When did God speak to Samuel? He was ministering to to the Lord. Now that's a lot different than ministering for the Lord. Now I want to talk about that just a second because there's a lot of times we can do things for the Lord. Matter of fact, when uh, it's in Matthew chapter 7, it talks about a man coming to the Lord and they'd come and say, Lord, did we not do this? Did we not do that? They ministered unto the Lord or, or for the Lord, but they didn't minister unto him. They didn't even know him, matter of fact. So here, there's a difference in ministering to the Lord and ministering for the Lord. See, ministering for the Lord is when I teach it right now, tonight, I'm preaching. I'm ministering for the Lord. See, I, I could teach a lesson, give a sermon. I could help a person, help somebody in need. That's horizontally. When I'm doing this, I'm doing it for the Lord. See, I, that's others-oriented. 
Because now we're focusing on you at home, delivering God's word to you for him. See, that's what ministering for the Lord is. We're doing it in his name. See, and that's all good. Matter of fact, I'm grateful for that. That there have been times a pastor ministered to me that I heard his word and I was able to get saved. See, that's ministering for the Lord. But it's a curse compared to ministering to the Lord. You're like, okay, Coach Kid, you're confusing me. How's that a curse? Well, when you compare what it is to ministering to him, it is. It doesn't, it pales in comparison. In Ezekiel chapter 44, in verse number 10, it says, And the Levites that are gone away from me, see, the ones that had gone away, when Israel went astray, which went astray away from me after their idols, See, they served other idols. It says, they shall even bear their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary. Even though they did that, they're going to still be ministers in my sanctuary, he said. Having charge at the gates of the house and ministering to the house. So they can minister to the house. They shall slay the burnt offerings and the sacrifice for the people. And they shall stand before them to minister unto them. Because they ministered unto them before their idols and caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity, therefore have I lifted up mine hand against them, saith the Lord God. And they shall bear their iniquity. Now it goes on, it says, And they shall not come near unto me to do the office of a priest unto me, nor to come near to any of my holy things in the holy most or the most holy place, but they shall bear their shame, their abominations which they have committed. But I will make them keepers of the charge of the house for all the service thereof and for all that shall be done therein. But, now listen to this, verse 15, the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, that kept the charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me. And they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith the Lord God. They shall enter into my sanctuary. They shall come near to my table to minister unto me. They shall keep my charge you see the difference right there in that verse you can minister for god but it, it pales in comparison to ministering to him see the we know the story and i've used it quite a bit martha and mary lazarus's sisters both of them martha had jesus in her house and she was fixing him a dinner but mary was at his feet Know the difference. Martha's work of fixing a dinner was ministering for the Lord. But Mary sitting at his feet was ministering to him. See, and that's the difference in what, what was taking place. See, see, Samuel was not just ministering for the Lord. He was ministering to the Lord. It's personal. See, I could give all my money to the church. I could, I could go across the seas and, and share the gospel. All that is ministering for him. Preaching God's word is ministering for him. But ministering to him is intimate worship. Just between you and him, when you have the pleasure in the Lord, you, you're, you're pleasing him with your voice. You're giving him your affection, your attention. You're giving him your love. You're saying to him, Lord, I need you. I love you. And you're in need of what you have. You're focusing on him. I'm reminded of a strong song. If you just sing, sometimes these, these hymnals and these songs, we have praise songs where we pray, talk about the Lord. But then there's some songs that sing to him. They're minister to him. Where you say, you are my strength when I am weak. You are the shelter that I seek. You are my all in all. See, that's talking to him. 
Because you're worshiping Him. You're having intimacy with Him. You're, you're praising Him. See, it's not about what you do and, or you see me do to other people. It's what you do to Him. Coming to the Lord and saying, Lord, I love you. I appreciate you. It's the highest calling in life. Every one of us can do that. We might not all be able to give a million dollars to the church. Okay, probably none of the ones I know, but we can't do that. But you know what? We may not all be able to stand and preach God's Word. We might not all be able to teach a Sunday school class or, or drive a church van or, or even take up the offering. We may not all be able to do that because that's ministering for the Lord. But you know what you can do? You could give Him your praise. You could give Him your glory. You, every single one of us could do the highest calling in ministry, which is ministering to the Lord. Tell Him how good He is. See, I've been at home by myself that first week. I think that first day, I think Pastor Bobby come over. Uh, he's come over to my yard once but uh, and drove by. But uh, my mom's came up. And you know what? When she comes up, it's sweet. Mom, I love you. You know what? First thing she does, she goes over to my trash can and sees if it's full. Usually it's pretty full. And she takes it out of the trash can and takes it out to the trash. Then she'll come and, and try to fix me something to eat. She'll try to clean my house. I'm like, Mom, <laughs> thank you. I love her. But, you know, she'll come and do those little things. Those little things for me. See, that's all good. That's ministering to me. Or, or for me. But, you know, and you all know the difference. When you're sitting with somebody... I had her sit down and we watched a movie about a dog. Uh, she likes dogs. But we sat and watched a movie. We sat together. We fellowshiped. That's ministering to me. I was ministering to her and her to me. Same thing. If you have a, if you have a grandchild, nothing so precious. I, I see them on Facebook. I see, I see some of the people, some of my friend group have children. And their grandparents, they, they just eat them up. Because they give them affection. You know, that they, they, they worship basically. They, they sit there and they grab your face, the little grandchildren, and just to sit on your lap and just the coo and the caw, the little thing, how they do. It's just so precious. You love them to death. That's what God loves. We give Him our worship, our affection, our attention. People say, I don't, I don't go to the worship service because I don't get anything out of it. Well, <laughs> that speaks a lot about you. It's not what we get out of it. It's what we put into it. See, because it's not all about me. See, because then we're ministering to or being ministered to. But it's, it's ministering for. Ministering to him, ministering for someone else. Acts chapter 13 kind of gives us an insight to this. Here, here is Paul and Barnabas. It, it's talking about them here in verse 13 two. It says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work which I have called them. They got the word to separate Barnabas and Saul for the work they were getting commissioned. When did they did get that word? When they were ministering to the Lord. Love on him. You, you've got an opportunity. God has given it to you. An opportunity where he just said, be still, world, and know that I am God. See, secondly, on that note, where did he speak to Samuel at? Samuel was in the temple. Okay, Coach Kid, you got us there. We can't come to church. Oh, wait a second. Oh, contrary. Matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 says, Know ye not? that ye are the temple of God and the Spirit of God which dwelleth in you. His Holy Spirit dwells in you. You are His temple. If you devote yourself to Him, you know, we, 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 we call these things having our devotions, devoting ourselves towards Him, getting in God's Word, reading and praying, learning more about Him, but not only that, learning who he is talking to him 
See, we can learn all about him, but I want to know him more and get closer to him. See, why did God speak to Samuel? Why we, we look, he was a child. He that's who he spoke to. But why Samuel? Notice it says he got out of bed. Matter of fact, he did it four times. When God said Samuel, he was responsive. So fourth thing is, why did God speak to Samuel? Because he got out of bed. He was responsive to what God said. Every time he called, he got out of bed. In the middle of the night, maybe it's the chili dog you've eaten. You may think, oh no, this chili dog's tearing me up. Well, you can't sleep. Or you're sitting there tossing and turning and you can't go to sleep. You think that's a coincidence? You were tired just 10 minutes before. But when you lay down, you can't go to sleep. Now you've turned the TV off, everything's quiet. You're still, finally. And you know what? He's talking to you. Maybe it's a neighbor's dog that wakes you up. Maybe you've got a weak bladder and you have to go to the restroom. Maybe your wife is snoring. I don't know what it is, but you lay there and you can't get this stuff out of your mind. It keeps churning through your mind over and over. It's, and it happens because finally everything's quiet. Everything's come to, to where you could focus on him. See, do you just pull the covers over and turn over and go back to sleep? Because he's wanting to talk to you. He's wanting to spend time with you. See, you've got this, this opportunity. See, see, here's the thing. You've got to get up out of bed. Now I'm talking to a whole different group right here who, who uh, could sleep all day, you know. we got to get out of bed. we got to hear his voice. See, he says, seek my face and you'll hear my voice. See, these interruptions. We've had one of the biggest interruptions I've seen ever to my life, to your life. I have more opportunity to sit down and read God's word. I got called to preach when I was, or to, to preach God's word when I was in college. I would read through God's word all the time. And you know, I had my studies to do, but I still studied this right here. I have more time now to sit and read God's word because of of something I couldn't help, something I didn't plan for. It's this interruption. Now you have time to get into God's Word. Now you have that opportunity that He's presented to you. You may say it's a hard time, it's a bad time, but it's an opportunity that God's given to you to get into His Word. You know, also, He got out of bed because there was interruptions, but also, let's look at Samuel's faithfulness here. In verse 18, it says, And Samuel told him every whit, and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth good to you. See, Samuel told Eli everything. He was faithful to what God's word had showed him. He didn't try to hide it or didn't try to push it aside. He got into what God's word said, and he, and he shared it. Are you faithful to what God's word says? And the last thing I want to look at here real quickly is verse 15, back up here. It says in verse 15, it says, And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the door of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Why? That speaks of Samuel, Samuel's tenderness. He hated to do it. He really didn't want to get up and say, Destruction's coming to you. Those that some preachers I, I hear that do, they get up and preach fire and brimstone and, and they're, they're happy they, that, that things happen to people that are sinners and dead in their sins. But sometimes they, they enjoy preaching destruction. But see, Samuel was tender in what he said, that God's word was precious to him. And see, he loved Eli and he hated to even share it, but he did. And I know, Pastor Bobby, myself, sometimes we get up and we have to share a hard word. We don't, we don't enjoy <laughs> preaching it necessarily. I know that God's going to get the glory, but, but we got to share that. We got to share what is, what is 
what the word thus saith the word of God. See, I want to look at just one thing here. As as you could be like Samuel, and I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Bobby, and he's going to come up in just a second. But first, Samuel Samuel had to be attentive to what God was saying. He had to tune in to his frequency. He was sitting in the house of the Lord asleep. And then he got out of bed and he went to hear what God had to say. Are you attentive? Are you tuned in to what God has to say? I ask you to look into God's word. Now I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Bobby. Brother Bobby, thank you very much for you, for this opportunity. God bless you. I'm going to need this one here in just a minute. <laughs> you got me. Guys, listen for just a few minutes. I won't be long. Brother Ralph, I enjoyed that message. I enjoyed that. It kind of hit me with what we were talking about there just a few minutes ago when I was talking about who are we listening to or what are we listening to. I like the idea of Samuel got up every time. Brother Ralph brought the word of God tonight. I want to tell you what Paul said to Timothy toward the end of his preaching. Young Timothy was a preacher. He said, I charge you therefore, therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but according to their own desires because they have itching ears they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables now, I want to ask you something tonight. I want to ask you something tonight. There's a lot going on. We've had a lot of time to be alone. Have you felt the Lord tugging on your heart? Have you felt the Lord tugging on your heart wanting to have a relationship with you? Wanting to come close to you? Don't you want to come close to him? Listen, there's one true peace that's going to come out of all this. That is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because it, it doesn't matter about what they say, how all this is going to end or how it's going to come about. What matters and what's most important is this. That you and I hear God's word. We hear his word, we respond to his word. After we hear it, we listen to it. And my question tonight is this. Are you out there and you're not sure about where you're at? You're not sure about where you're at with the Lord as far as your relationship. Maybe the Lord's number three, number four, maybe he's number five, number six on your list of important things. I'm begging you tonight to do this. Hear his word, respond to his word, give your heart to him. Allow yourself during this time to let him speak to you. I say this all the time, to have a relationship, one person talks, the other person listens. The other person talks, that person listens. When I'm praying to God, that's me talking to him. When I'm reading his word, that's him talking to me. 
Oh, during this time, you have the opportunity to have a great relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and allow Him to guide and allow Him to direct you and allow Him to take you through this time. There's suffering going on right now. We've got those that are affected by the virus. We've, we've had deaths. We've had sicknesses. We've got job issues, people losing their jobs. We've got all these things going on. But I want you to know that God is in control and he loves you and he wants to have a relationship with you and he wants to take you through this and he has a plan for you. Will you give your heart to him tonight? Will you cuddle up next to him tonight? He wants to cuddle up next to you. He wants to love on you. He wants you to trust in him. He wants you to hear his voice. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to worship with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, whoever is listening, Lord, wherever they're at, that, Lord, if they don't know you as Lord and Savior, they've never given their heart to you, that tonight they would give their heart to you, that, Lord, that they would become a born-again believer in you, a child of God. And I pray tonight, Lord, if there's someone out there that, Lord, that they believed in you, Lord, they used to be in church, Lord, and, Lord, they, they, they used to talk, they used to pray, they used to read, and, Lord, they're not doing that now. They're just not as close. And, Lord, all they're caught up in all this noise and everything that's going on. I pray that they'd find you. I pray they'd hear your voice and they'd respond to it. Oh, Lord, how we desire to have a relationship with you, how I desire that. Lord, I, I can't do anything without you. And your peace and your comfort is the only one that takes care of me. And I pray that you'd show that to them tonight. Have your way. <clears throat> Amen. All right, listen up. You know, we're with you on Tuesday night with a Sunday school lesson. Brother Ralph preaching on Wednesday night. And then we're with you with another Sunday school lesson on Thursday night. So we'll be back again Thursday night. All three of these times are 7 p.m. These times are, we're going on Sunday mornings now with a new time at 10 a.m. Uh, listen in with us. Uh, we're going to give you some announcements. We are, we are looking into doing some things. We're excited about uh, maybe getting back into uh, seeing each other before long. So we've got some things that are running through, some things through, uh, ideas through the, through the uh, elders of the church and the deacons, and we're talking. So we miss you. We love you. I love you guys. I miss you all. I want to see you again shortly. Thy word is very pure, therefore thy servant loveth it. And the two people in here said? Amen. Amen. Psalms 150 and verse 6 says, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. So we're going to lift them up real high. One, two, three. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord.